As a result of the missile strike on Poltava, one of the buildings of the Institute of Communications was partially destroyed. The rescue operation continues. Vladimir Zelensky reported this. I have received preliminary reports of a Russian strike on Poltava. According to the information available at the moment, two ballistic missiles hit the territory of an educational institution and a nearby hospital. One of the buildings of the Institute of Communications was partially destroyed. People were trapped under the rubble. Many were rescued. More than 180 people were injured. Unfortunately, there are many dead. As of now, 41 people are known to have died. My deepest condolences to all the families and friends. I have ordered a full and prompt investigation of all the circumstances of the incident. All necessary services have been involved in the rescue operation. I am grateful to each and every one who has been helping people from the first minutes after the impact, who is saving lives. The president said. Earlier, People's Deputy Mariana Bazugla hinted that today in Poltava there was an arrival of military personnel for the formation. Poltava. The formation in the 128th Brigade did not teach anything, no one was punished, Zelazny, Syrsky, Pavlyuk decided everything then. There is a repetition and repetition of tragedies. Where is the limit? The People's Deputy writes. Also, Communications expert Sergei Flesh wrote that there is a big problem there. And local resident Sergei Kornienko notes that the missiles hit where there were many of our soldiers. According to him, as a result, many were killed and wounded. Meanwhile, the Russian Federation claims that they launched a missile strike on the Ukrainian Armed Forces Military School in Poltava, which trains radar and electronic warfare specialists for the Ukrainian army. Russian publics are publishing what they claim are the aftermath of the landings in Poltava. In an attempt to destroy Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has created a strange economic model in Russia in which it is more profitable for Russians to die at the front than to live and work. This is written by the French newspaper Le Monde. As the publication notes, the Kremlin is trying with all its might to attract new volunteers to be sent to the front line. They are trying to lure them with huge cash payments that came from the federal and regional budgets. In July, Putin decided to double the monthly salary of contract soldiers participating in the SVO from 195,000 rubles to 400,000 rubles or $4,400. This is 10 times more than the average salary of Russian military personnel in peacetime. Added to this is a one-time bonus of 1.2 million rubles or $13,000 paid for signing a contract. This tax-free income comes with various privileges for servicemen and their families, including preferential mortgages, admission to the country's most prestigious universities without entrance exams, a comfortable pension and social status. And if such a volunteer dies at the front, his family will receive a cosmic by Russian standards, 11 million rubles or more than $120,000. True, the amount here depends greatly on the region. A strange economic model has emerged, according to which a dead Russian earns more for his family than a living one. In fact, if a man decides to go to war and dies between 30 and 35, that is, at the age when he is most active and in the best shape of his life, his death will be more advantageous from an economic point of view than his future writes Le Monde. As Russian economist Vladislav Inozentsev, who now lives in the United States, notes, this method of recruiting cannon fodder is new to Russia. In the past, soldiers were recruited with tales of patriotic duty or by simple coercion. Now, the average Russian who earns an average of $200 to $400 faces a colossal monetary temptation, which often outweighs the risks. One of the side effects of flooding the population with money is abnormal growth of the economy, which is maintained at an elevated level of consumption. This leads to the so-called overheating of the economy when prices rise rapidly due to the inability to satisfy the huge demand. 
the country's production capacity is exhausted. Russia has been engulfed by a wave of high inflation. Due to the overheating of the economy, prices are rising on a continuous front for food, gasoline, services, industrial goods. The draconian refinancing rates from the Russian Central Bank introduced many months ago cannot stop the growth of prices. Former Polish Prime Minister Jan Krzysztof Bilecki is convinced that the overheated Russian economy will collapse as soon as the war is over. Since Russia's current prosperity is based on huge budget injections into military production and payments to the military, as soon as the need for such expenditures disappears, many enterprises will be left without orders and millions of people will be left without work.